Hey, Buzzline.com, it's Jeffrey Dammit again here at Bleed Fest. I'm with Michelle Tomlinson, an actress here. How are you doing? Hello. I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. What have you been working on lately? Uh, lately, I've actually been working with my business partner in New York on a crazy, crazy feature film about chick serial killers called Itch. Kimberly Amato and I are working on that. It's a very deep, dark, disturbing, gross project and uh, there's an itchthemovie.com website that we've got for it and there's also a trailer for it that's on YouTube on my Facebook on the itchthemovie.com it's all over the place so all right now we're at bleed fest though yes. and a lot of horror going on yes. well to, to say something is so disgusting it's and, disgusting like, like, give us yeah. a little like oh I don't know she might kill what, if I get too much what kind of scale okay. are we talking of uh, a scale would probably be if it was one to ten there's some twelve going on there's in there some 12? yes and it's it's it goes, the, the story is going to the place of where did the serial killer stuff start with these two girls that are best friends, they're also lovers, but it's not, it's not lesbianism in your face lovers, it's just this understated lovely relationship, and I play a very dominating, quasi-abusive character, and you know, all the juicy good stuff. Was that hard for you? Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, yes. Because, you know... I don't want to be mean to somebody that I love. It's hard, you know? So, yes, that type of character is really difficult. I, I'm been, I've been playing, like, the strong victim that comes through the end, like in the cellar door where, you know, Ruby lives in the, Rudy lives in the end, and stuff like that is what I'm used to, not the, like, oh, I hate you, and eh. So she's really a sweet, sweet, sweet one on the inside, but this next movie is going to show you a new side of a show. Yes, just a little bit. <laughs> it was very nice to meet you. Give me some specific examples of like where like women, you know, aren't voices aren't being heard. Um, One. I've I've personally been working in the industry 17 years. I've seen it firsthand with my girlfriends. I've seen them get passed up over and over again. And uh, you kind of get fed that belief that you're different or you're better or you're special and you're going to be the one that's good enough to make it. But it's never been about women not being good enough to make it. That's they're not... all good enough to make it. Because if you see the films we're show showcasing, they're good. I mean, with a little bit of cash, a little bit of support, they're fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they know what they're doing. They've got it going on. They're yeah. running, they're directing, they're running their cast, they're running their crew. They got it. And a big part of why we started Bleed Fest, too, was because being on the festival circuit with our film, The Commune, we met a lot of awesome female filmmakers, and we realized that they did exist, that it wasn't that whole myth of that women aren't making movies is so not true. Yeah, and then, yeah, let me butt in. Because we thought we were the only ones out there that were females making movies. Because the media <laughs> tells you over and over again that there are no women making cool movies. They only like romantic comedies and all that BS. And also, they kind of tell you that, like, basically... If the film were as good as a guy's, it would get out there and it would get picked up. And what we learned from seeing other women's films on the circuit was that was total bullshit and that there was some kind of systematic discrimination going on. And instead of focusing on the discrimination, mm. we just decided to, to become a distributor. <laughs> one, one of the reasons that we also started the festival instead of putting our energy into another female festival that mm -hmm. al already exists is I don't, I haven't found a female festival I like going to. One thing, because I think it gets ghettoized to call it female, that's why we're badass. We're not a female genre film festival. Mm -hmm. We're just um, badass. I, I find that, you know, I think that film festival coordinators pick the same kind of movies they like, uh. and over and over again with film festivals that we went to, we found a lot of, like, kind of treacly, whiny, you know, drama. Like, I don't fucking watch that. Well, that? I want horror. I want action. I want, you know, like, I want to see the kind of movies I want to see, the kind of movies that everybody perpetuates women don't like and aren't making, and we're just proving it's bullshit. Either, either that, you would see a lot of that, or we would get the, um, I hate men. I don't like men. Yeah. I, we're going to, you know, kind of chop them off at the knees or wherever else you want to chop them off. And that's not us. I mean, we love men. We need men. That's that's our support. We need to engage them and help us with our cause. I absolutely identify myself as a feminist, but I'm a third wave feminist. I love men. I love team working with them. And I don't, I, I think that when men are approached the right way where you're in partnership with them, um, they totally get it and they want us to have equal rights yeah. and to make equal pay and to have equal opportunities to express our lives in the media. So. Ladies and gentlemen of BuzzLine.com, we're here at Bleed Fest with Miguel. How you doing? What's going on? I see I see you're toting around the new Bride of Frankenstein poster. Fill me in. Well, uh, next Saturday I'm showing um, the Bride of Frankenstein with 
uh, The Horror of Our Love by Dave Rita, and also uh, Psychosexual, the new short from Elizabeth Fees, who puts on this show every month. And I also do a podcast, Monster Island Resort. So monsterislandresort.org. All right, well, they're going to check you out, and uh, we'll check you guys out in just a little while right here at buzzline.com. Jeffrey Dammit Harris, Sophia Siegel, she did Mare Mare. Let's hear about it. How'd you get the idea? Where did it start? Well, at the time that I wrote the song, I was reading a lot of Buddhist literature and uh, reading up on a lot of shamanism. So I got the idea during one of my practices to be able to just dive in a little bit deeper to the layers of the psych and do a video where the mind is kind of conflicting. The um, Talk about the dualism um, and the spiritual dilemmas that one gets into. Awakening yourself and finding some type of resolve. So it's, it's, it's a process of awakening, so that's where the idea came from. But originally it was from a song project that I had um, started in Seattle years ago. And so when I got to Los Angeles, it was time to make the video. And how'd you get involved with the Bleed Fest Girls, the Fees? Uh, my video had shown at the Horrible Imaginings uh, Film Fest down in San Diego, and uh, the founder of that event contacted Brenda Fies and Elizabeth, and they told him about my work, so that's how it was. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for the time. Nice meeting you. See you guys later.